Hello. Mr. Veer Varnia. Very nice to meet you. Likewise, pleasure. That's Mr. Kuleen Kutsai, our president. Hi. 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 Why don't you come? Uh, Hello. It was one of those dying chapters. Uh -huh. uh, dying chapter. Chandigarh doesn't have a very vibrant ecosystem. No. Uh, it's a largely government town. Uh, but la last four years, lots of interesting things have happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the downturn has been good. Because you have a lot of people who moved back uh, with about 15, 20 years of experience. What will they do? Are there any jobs? You will not get. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for all your patience and taking our time to come and attend the event. Uh, I would request our Thai president, Mr. Puneet Vatsai, to kindly take over the session and welcome uh, Madam Chitra Ramakrishna. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, our afternoon session. Uh, thank you, Chitra. Thank you, Dana, uh, uh, for making it. Uh, uh, to Chandigarh. Uh, I know this is not great weather, but next time probably when you come, uh, Chandigarh does uh, uh, offer and have great uh, weather here. Before we start the session, I thought I'd just uh, quickly give a brief on the profile of Chitra. Uh, Chitra is the joint managing director of Nadi National Stock Exchange of India. Chitra has been with uh, the NSE since its inception in 1991. And was a part of the five member board team that set up NSC. Uh, Chitra is the director and CEO of the National Settlement and Clearing Corporation of India and is a member of a number of boards and uh, policy committees. The talk that we've, uh, we have set up for today is essentially a mixed bag. It is about advice on uh, corporate governance, alternative money raising, uh, uh, entrepreneurship, capital markets. Uh, and before we jump into the session, uh, Dana is going to give a brief presentation uh, and then we'll start the talk with the group. Criteria. 
So it is available for corporates which are having a paid up capital of less than 25 crores. Within that, there is a further categorization. Such corporates can be coming on the SME main board, on the NSE main board also. That is, they can be listed like any other corporate. And those with less than 10 crores, those can be only on the SME platform. Uh, on the SME platform, there is no cap on what should be the market capitalization or what should be the issue size. Uh, a basic prerequisite is that the corporate should have had a three years existence and within that two years there should have been positive cash improvements. Uh, this is on the basic prerequisites. Now coming on to the post listing requirements. Uh, one important mainstay for the corporates of course is the corporate governance. So there is no compromising on that. That continues to be applicable for the corporates on the SME platform. The, so far as the submission of the half yearly financials go, on the main board listing, it is required to be submitted on a quarterly basis. But in SME, we are asking for it on a half yearly basis. Now, uh, this is just so far as the basic criteria. Now, in all of this, who do we expect to be act the actual issuers out here? What would be the issuer profile? It is something which is open to a lot of uh, different kinds of entrepreneurs. It can be a good option for traditional and new economy companies. Uh, for companies which are looking at capital for growth uh, and access to early investors also. For the VCs assisted by companies. It is for their next round of funding they can go for uh, this uh, kind of an option. Uh, relatively early stage companies also like we have seen the criteria we are talking of is a three year, uh, uh, three years of existence. So these kind of companies can be coming on to the uh, uh, SME platform. Now when SEPI has uh, given out the guidelines, these guidelines can be very broadly broken up into three important areas as we can see. One is that we are talking of a market for informed investors. When we look at the way the uh, product has been designed, who all can be coming on the SME platform and who all can be trading on these particular corporates, what we see is that uh, the defined uh, minimum size for subscription is one that. So which uh, primary PSI also kind of implies that you know it has to be with, uh, with people who have an understanding of the market. Because when we are talking of a minimum subscription of one that as opposed to five to seven thousand which is there on any other normal security, it means it could be high net worth individuals or institutions which are coming into this particular platform. So, here the minimum uh, size we have seen is one that. And these people would have a good understanding of the risk profile as well and the limits. So we are talking of a market for informed investors. The second is the simpler listing requirements. The listing requirements are simple, but they are not compromising on the important aspects like, uh, say, the corporate governance. So uh, there are no comments which are given by SEBI on the DRHP. It makes for faster process. The other is that uh, the requirement for allotties is a minimum of 50 as opposed to 1000 in the normal uh, uh, corporate uh, listing. So these kind of uh, specifications make for a faster and a cheaper IP. A very important thing for the corporates which are just, uh, which, are, which are very small rather or have just come in is the costing aspect. So when we are talking of the SME platform, the costing uh, kind of is not as hard because of the reasons. Safeguarding of the investor interest is a very important factor. That is something which uh, the SEPI wants, which every one of us wants, because we may also be investors. So, uh, one is that the due diligence certificate is required for the merchant bank. That calls for some level of uh, you know, safeguarding for the interest of the investors. There is a 100% underwriting of the IPOs, and 15% out of that is a commitment from the merchant bank. The third thing is that there is a three-year market making responsibility which the merchant banker has to undertake. So three-year period with giving two-way quotes on 75%, there are lots of specifications over here, which ensure that there is good enough liquidity in the corporate when it is trading on the NSC trading platform. So uh, because a very important thing for the corporates would be I get my security listed but it doesn't trade enough. So the, uh, putting this onus on the merchant banker and that he has to give a three year, uh, perpetually give a three year mark, mark making, you know, kind of uh, handles that particular concern also. The 
SME platform we are saying is giving new opportunity for the emerging companies. And of course it is for raising capital for various different requirements. Typically we would say it would be for growth, for uh, innovation and the likes, which is a very positive trend. The question which arises is why would any corporate want to really list? A very evident answer definitely is that it gives a lot of recognition and visibility. This is a point which doesn't require more emphasis. We are clear that if a corporate is listed on an exchange platform and say on an NNC platform where, could, where the trading volumes are rather high, where the investor base is very high and also when we are talk, uh, saying that we are listing the, the, the corporates on the SME platform the members who are there trading in the other securities are also eligible for trading over here and the same uh, kind of clients also. So the recognition and visibility that it imparts for a small or corporate is really tremendous. It of course provides the long term capital which the uh, corporate requires for its growth. Uh, one important challenge for corporates today which we feel is that of talent retention. So, ESOPs is one way to retain talent and we feel that if a company is actually listed on the or rather is trading on the SME platform and is able to give out ESOPs to the class, to the staff, it makes for you know, retaining talent. The exit and liquidity for early stage investors and the venture capitalists. One, one aspect which we have already spoken about is the ease of listing and, and the lower time and cost overrun which it also entails. Uh, the aggregates risk investors basically stems from the fact that the minimum trading size also. Uh, there are two aspects. One is the minimum subscription that we for one lakh. Going forward when the uh, security is trading, there are also the minimum order size can be one lakh. So it kind of weans out the real small retail kind of clients which we are talking about. So that the institutional participation and the participation of HNIs who are really financially quite updated on all the aspects makes it uh, rather more attractive. There is an alternate valuation which we talk about. Alternate valuation comes from the fact that uh, when we are talking of say institutional investors, they would not value the that, uh, rather not value the corporate traditionally by benchmarking it with others. What they would really look at is what are the growth prospects, what are the innovations that the corporate is doing. So it's an alternate valuation which works very good for the corporates. Now uh, one very important thing here would be that the comp corporate which is there on the NSC SME platform would be find it easier to get listed on the main. The listing on the main board will not be an automatic listing just because he's been there. But how it actually makes for that is because it has been already trading, it is already having good investor base, so its growth is faster. Faster growth is what will, will make it really eligible for going on to the main board. And once listed on the main board, then the country is trading like any other. So one we really positioning the SME platform. It is something which is in between the main board, of course, as we know, and the private equity. So it is something it is a very good placement for a corporate which is of a small size right now or which has only just started. It is moving towards the main board and it is also you know putting in checks and balances in place. It is having all the due diligences in place. So it may it uh, it is a good positioning which a corporate will get at a very initial stage, a nascent stage of its existence. The admission process we say is really critical. It's a three step process. The first is of course the merchant bankers due diligence which is a prerequisite. Uh, the, uh, once all the uh, DRHB and the management uh, the RHP have been submitted, there is management discussions which would happen and an in principle approval would be given. The final approval will come of course after submission of the final prospectus and uh, with the details of the underwriting and the calculating arrangements. Uh, the, uh, where the process is without the DRHP not having to go through another round with any other entity, it makes for a very efficient system and it's transparent, efficient and of course credible. What really is the 
roadmap to listen. Uh, when we are talking of uh, uh, corporate, what is it that the investors really look for? They look for some few aspects which are very important to them. They want a growth and a scalability story. They don't want that we are investing in a corporate and that is going to remain the way it is because it has to grow, it has to be scalable to take in new products. It has to be scalable to innovation also. So that is what the investors will really look for. They would definitely want a clear capital raising and employment plan. Nothing should be gray and lazy. The organization and team to deliver this is very important because uh, one way just on the face of it, not really think so. But uh, if a company is having a good sound board, if it is having a good senior management which has a good deal of experience and is uh, clear in their vision and their picture, it makes for a good deal of investor confidence. So that is uh, one other important. Corporate governance, of course, is the mainstay, like we have said. I just uh, show you a few points on corporate governance because this is something which uh, yeah. it's just uh, we are talking of the increased transparency and clarity of roles between the management and the board, uh, and the board members. It's uh, the structuring of the organization and the independence of the board. The board independence is a very important factor. Combine, combines with regulatory and uh, requirements and the financial disclosures regarding financial fulfilling obligations to the shareholders and managing ongoing communications with various stakeholders. So these, uh, with respect to corporate governance, uh, there, there is uh, very clearly that there has to be a full compliance by the corporate governance. So that was all I have made it real quick and fast for you. If there are any questions, one is that you could look up for more details on our website, nseindia.com. And for queries, you could also, of course, we take your questions, but you could also write to us on emerge at uh, nse.co.in. Thank you, Rana. And then I can assure you that all the questions that will come up, uh, I certainly have a point of view myself. So, oh. so uh, we just hang on for a moment, and uh, uh, I'd like to now uh, ask Zipra. Good evening, and thank you very much for having me here. Um, as I was just sharing with Punit before the meeting started, um, in SMEs, every meeting is a learning experience for us at the exchange because we want to try and understand the needs and where the shoe pinches for the user. And the user is really the one who potentially can be on the SME platform. So I am really grateful that you put this together where it's an opportunity for me to equally hear from all of you in terms of uh, where you see value and where you think we can play a bigger uh, role or take on a little more responsibility and make things a little smoother and easier for all of you. My colleague Rana, in the last uh, 15 minutes, did a quick recap from a pure, uh, you know, framework perspective of today what the SME uh, framework provides for, what the SEBI guidelines really provide for. So I'm not going to repeat any of, you know, the uh, data and the information that she's already shared with you, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about what this experience has been of putting this SME platform together over the last one and a half years. Um, you know, as an exchange, the main board or the, the main listed company board that all of you are familiar with when you pick up a pink paper um, is what NSC used to run and runs for the last 18 years. And the way you approach company listings in the main board, uh, we very quickly realized cannot be the same way in which we will approach an SME listing. In the main board, pretty much we could wait for people to come and say whether they were interested in a listing on the main board. And if they were interested, then we could sort of explain to them and take them forward. So it was very much a sort of a, a, a pull situation where those who were interested walked into our dog and you know the framework had been there for several decades and so everyone was pretty much clear about what this framework was and what is the value out of listing on the exchange. 
Uh, none of this is really very obvious or evident for the small and medium sector. So, in putting this framework together, the first thing we really did was uh, over a year and year and a half, engaged with a lot of the uh, angel network, the VCs, many of the firms in clusters uh, in the north, in the south, in the west, and so on, just to sort of hear what were the big pain points. And really, is something like an SME board even on top of their mind? Is this really something that's in the